Red light therapy is well known to be beneficial for skin health, joint pain, wound healing, even brain function. But how does it go when it comes to sports performance? And if it is effective, how exactly should we go about using it? So we took a deep hard look in the slides and what we found was quite amazing. In fact, the findings from our research is going to mean my personal red light therapy protocol and the devices I'm using are actually going to change. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video, so be sure to stay for that. Okay, so anyone that has dipped their toes into the pool of uh, red light therapy research will know that it is a little bit overwhelming. There are literally thousands of papers out there. So working through all of this was quite a massive task, but we did find a couple of dozen studies that were really well done and look specifically at light therapy and sports performance or indirectly sports recovery. Now we cannot share all of our findings in this video because it will literally be a two hour presentation. So instead we've compiled a rather in-depth blog article over at alexfix.com. I'll put a link to that below. There you can take a deep dive into everything we found and of course see all of the studies that we referenced as well. But for the key takeaways, here's what we did discover. Red light therapy was effective at decreasing inflammation markers in a post-trained athlete. It did decrease muscle soreness in the days following a workout, and it also led to some performance and size gains in trained athletes. In one particular study, the researchers used 810 nanometer near-infrared light. They applied this light onto the bicep prior to exercise, and the group that had the 810 nanometer light applied to them increased their muscle endurance by 14%. That's a big improvement. The same study also found those athletes were also recovering faster than their peers who didn't have any light applied to the muscle. A similar discovery was reported in another study where they used 830 nanometer near-infrared light on the quad. Again, seeing faster recovery times. Another study found that subjects exposed to 810 nanometer light with training ended up having an increase in muscle size and increased force output. A treadmill study also using near-infrared light found that time to exhaustion was extended and recovery was also dramatically improved. This was achieved by a lower level of metabolic waste and also lower oxidative stress. But it's not just near-infrared that was beneficial. Red light also showed promise. One study found that a combination of red light 660 and near-infrared light and 830 nanometer light led to increased arm strength. And another one again combined red light with near-infrared light and found that pre-workout application led to an increase in strength performance and a decrease in training soreness post-workout. Now I need to mention that all of these were human studies. There are some animal studies out there. One in particular found that near-infrared light led to rats having an increased VO2 max, which is pretty neat. I should also throw out that we did come across one study that looked at 660 and 850 nanometer light, and it actually found that it had no impact on athletes. So look, even though majority of the studies we did look at showed promise, there was that one exception. One interesting takeaway from all of this, however, was the abundance of studies using 810 nanometer light. 810, yes, it's used in panels, but it's not as common as your 850 nanometer near infrared light. In fact, if you purchase a red light therapy panel from the biggest company in the market, that's Juve, that panel won't even emit any 810 nanometer light. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that a panel that doesn't have 810 isn't going to provide benefits, as we know well and truly that's not the case. It's just that a big chunk of the research was finding that the 810 nanometer light was best for sports performance. Again, remember that the common 660 and 850 nanometer wavelengths are going to be beneficial for one's health. We do know for a fact that mitochondrial activity and function is improved with exposure to these lights at the right irradiance. But in a nutshell, the key wavelengths we took away from our research in this topic was 810, 830, and even out to your 900s in the near infrared range. In the red light spectrum, still around your 660 and 670 nanometer light seem to be the best. And our wavelength recommendations were supported by a review paper that concluded the best wavelengths for muscle performance are found in the 630 to 660 nanometer range and the 800 up to the 950 nanometer near infrared range. So if you are looking for a panel to optimize sports performance, make sure you get something with multi-wave technology. But again, more on this later in the video. Okay, so what about dosage? We know that red light therapy works for sports performance. We've got a pretty good idea on what wavelengths to use, but how much of this light should we use? Well, we found that a dose of up to 60 joules works best. That same review paper I quoted before stated that red light therapy for sports performance found that the optimal dose range from 10 joules as a min minimum up to 60 joules as a maximum. And this is interesting because it fits within that typical 30 to 40 joule dosage range that we often see uh, put out by various companies and other experts. However, I do need to mention that there were some studies showing that too much can lead to negative results. 
How much is too much? Well, we're talking dosage rates up in the hundreds of joules. So you'd really have to overdo it or use an extremely powerful device to be hitting these sort of numbers. And if you're wondering, okay, so what does this all mean? Let's, let's say you've got a body panel, how long should you use it? Well, I crunched some numbers and pretty much if you're using a typical body panel for say 10, 15 minutes, at six inches, you're gonna be fine. There are two other things I need to point out around dosing though. Firstly, all of the studies we looked at used lasers instead of LEDs. Secondly, almost all of the studies we looked at had the light source directly on the skin. As you move the light source away from the body, you do get a bit of light reflection. Now, I know you're probably thinking, gosh, just this is confusing. And trust me, I know there are a lot of variables, there are a lot of unknowns, and it's why it's so hard to come out and say, look, this product for this time will achieve this result because it, it isn't quite as clear as that. Next up, I wanted to take a look at timing. Does it matter when you use the device? Is there a sweet spot? Should you use it before, after? How does it work? A lot of the research either used the devices immediately prior or immediately post training. However, some researchers did experiment with dosage times earlier in the day. And what they found was that there was an advantage to using red light therapy about three to six hours prior to your workout. Using it then led to lower muscle damage and increased performance. So maybe to optimize an after work training session, you'd actually do your red light therapy treatment during your lunch break. Now some studies did compare treatment protocols immediately before and immediately after workouts, and it showed that both of them did lead to overall performance gains. What about using your red light therapy during exercise? This is something that I've often thought about as I've been doing my interval trainings or heavy squat sets, and there was a paper looking at this exact question. The researchers used 810 nanometer light, yes 810 again, and they applied it directly to the quad during a final set of exercise. They also had a placebo group, uh, who didn't have the A10 running. And they found that yes, those that had the A10 shining on the body actually had a better performance outcome. So that is quite interesting. Let's sum all this up. The bottom line is red light therapy works. We know it works and it works for so many things and it's now clear that it works for sports performance and recovery as well. But there's no exact standardized protocol or procedure in terms of how you should use it to get the best gains and best benefits. And even if there was a protocol that was meant to be really good, it doesn't necessarily mean it would work for everyone, given training differences, recovery, body shape, body composition, all sorts of factors, right? It's, it gets tricky. As I've often said in these videos, there are so many variables at play. You have time of day, you have dosing, you have power intensity, you have frequency of use, you have your training modalities, you have the device that you use, you have your skin color, skin tone, there is, it's, it's crazy. It really is crazy. And that's why even with thousands of studies out there, we still don't really know what is the best way to use red light therapy. But if you're looking for red light therapy to optimize your sports performance and your recovery, here's a few key takeaways. Get a device that's got both red light and near infrared light in it. Near infrared does penetrate deep and more of the research is around the near infrared light. In particular, if you can, find a device that's got 810 nanometer light. That's the wavelength that the bulk of the sports performance research is done with and it does show great potential. Next up, get something that's gonna be able to treat the muscles that you're working and also the size of those muscles. Now, if you're a cyclist, for instance, you need something to treat the quads and the hamstrings. If you're a power lifter, well, it's, it's really the full body. And then you need to think of practicality and how you use it. I'm lucky that I have my panels hanging in my gym, but that may not be the case for you. You may want to get something small that you can spot treat or as you're getting changed ready for a workout, or you may decide to have a large full body panel hanging from your wardrobe at home. And when you're back home in the evening, then you do your treatment. So really though, there's no downside to red light therapy and sports performance. Unless of course you overdo it, but to do that, you have to be using an extremely high powered panel or be spending hours in front of that panel every week. Now, if you are looking for a panel that could work really well for sports performance, I recommend you check out the Mito Red Light Mito Adapt series. I've reviewed their mini version and you can watch that video by clicking here. Now, the neat thing about this panel is 25% of the power is going to your 810 nanometer near infrared light. And I'll put a link to our full article on this topic, including all the references, so you can check that out in your own time. Bye.